Thank you to my patrons, Godfrey and Jalen Dorsey for making these videos possible. What's going on YouTube? It's Castlescope back with another video. Today you're gonna to be learning how to jersey swap in 2023. This tutorial on jersey swapping is unlike many of my others where I go, you know, cut up and I go in real time, but this overview I feel like is gonna give you guys even more insight to what I'm doing. Um, just cause it's just a more relaxed sense and I'm gonna give you guys all the shortcuts I'm using, everything like that. So the first thing I do with this Victor Wembenyama mask is I use select subject, all right? So you can just hit select and then subject and that's gonna select your subject automatically. And now you see me cleaning it up with the lasso tool. One of my favorite tools in Photoshop, shortcut is L for the lasso tool, but you really, really wanna make sure that you have a clean setup to begin your masking. So once you are done, I hit that layer mask icon in the bottom, which you guys saw, it's a little rectangle with the circle in the middle. And now I'm switching to a hairbrush and painting on with white because it's on a layer mask. So when you paint white on a layer mask, it's going to bring any details back. If you paint black, it's going to actually decrease the details and minimize the mask. The hairbrush can be downloaded from the description of this video. It's always going to be in the description of my videos. So that's where you guys can download the brush and it's called like pelt brush and you guys will just have to look at the pelt brushes. I believe it's pelt too, but just look at those pelt brushes when you download it for the hair and they work really well. So you guys see I'm just going over detailing at a high flow because I want to bring back that hair detail. And then I'm just going in on the smaller points with a black full brush and you see if you hold down shift while you're doing your brush or using your brush and then you go to the next point you can actually go on a straight line so if you click and then you hold down shift and go to the next point you can actually go on a straight line but that's going to only be on some areas like the neck or just a straight area of the mask i added a solid fill back uh a solid color in the background just so that i can really see everything and how much detail we got going here and just making sure the detail looks right so now i'm going to add a group because i want to put him inside of his own group so i hit add a group and then i'm going to control click on the mask and then you see what i did there i control click on the mask so that the group has his actual mask outline so that's going to be the actual group so whatever adjustments i add inside of that group are only going to be contained within the mask and they won't go outside so this is a great way to keep your Photoshop cutouts really neat and really just professional looking in terms of your PSD as well. So as we continue, I'm just making duplicate copies of the mask and you can just make duplicate copies of a layer by hitting control J and then I'm just naming them just to make sure I stay pretty organized throughout my pieces. A lot of times, you know, we get so far ahead in our pieces that we don't stay organized, but on Jersey Swaps especially, it's really good to just stay organized. So now we're gonna move into content aware fill. And you guys see I selected that polygonal lasso tool. If you ever go to the lasso tool and you wanna select a different tier of it, you just hold down on the tool. So you just gotta go over to that toolbar. If you hit the shortcut, it'll go to, if you hit the shortcut L, it'll go to the lasso tool. But sometimes you have to hit that toolbar and then click and hold so that you can go to a different one. So this is the polygonal lasso tool. And you guys see how it kinda of just selects things in a straight line for wherever you connect it. And then at the top as well, if you guys see those two squares on top of each other, make sure that is on, cause that's called combined shape. So that's gonna allow us to keep adding to the selections we're making. So I'm just going in and selecting around these points. You don't have to be super, super accurate of in terms of like every single like logo or anything like that just go around it because we're going to use content aware fill and it does a really good job of detecting what should be filled in another thing to note about the lasso tool is if you hold down alt or option on the mac and then make a selection that's actually going to deselect when you have combined shapes on so make sure those two shapes are on but if you hold down alt it's going to actually do the opposite and you can deselect from the shape made just like that and you see on that O. So moving along, you hit sh Shift F5 and then go to Content Aware. And then Content Aware is gonna fill in the selection for you with you know the white jersey, which is what we want. We don't want all those details on top because we're gonna be doing a jersey swap. 
So shift F5, once you have your selection, then you're going to go to content aware and it's gonna fill in that way. And now what you see here is just my spot healing brush. So it's that icon with the band-aid and spot healing is good because it's a quick way to just fill in those areas where you might've had like a kind of a harsh selection and some of the edges are just super harsh like you see on the SPO and things like that. This jersey does have a lot of detail at the bottom, but as we move along, I'm gonna show you guys what I did to get that detail out. But this is just an example of how to use that spot healing brush to a T. So to use reference, I bring in this, this project. So see if I have a photo, you can actually drag a photo down or a project down and then minimize it. And then once you minimize it, you're gonna put it in the corner of your PSD or wherever it's not gonna to be too distracting and you can actually use this as your reference. I, I do say that I like to use peer reference. I'll link peer reference in this video as well. I like to use peer reference as my main guide of reference because I have two monitors. But for people that don't have two monitors, once you drag down a document in Photoshop from that taskbar like you had seen, and then just put it in an area where you know it's gonna be easily reachable, easily, easy to see, but not blocking out a lot of the content that you want to be using. It's a really good reference point for people with one monitor. So right here is where I start making one mask for the jersey and the arm sleeve. Um, I should have made a mask for the jersey separately and the arm sleeve in the beginning, but you guys are gonna see I did it for both, but it just made sense to me to make a separate mask for the arm sleeve and the jersey just to keep everything separated. So right now I'm just going in and masking around the jersey as you see it cuts to it, just cause you guys don't need to see the whole process of me masking out a jersey. I think that would be a little boring. So <laughs> here we go with the selection of pencil. So when you're using the pencil, shortcut P, and then what the pencil does is you bring it back to the beginning spot. And once you do that, right click, make selection, hit okay, and then it's gonna make a selection. So this selection needed a little bit more, so I added to it with the polygonal lasso tool from before that you guys had seen, and that completed the selection. So now we have the selection, but it's not tight to the subject, right? So what, are, what can we do? We already have this mask, so I right click on the original mask and then intersect the mask with the subject. And that condenses our mass selection to our actual subject and it doesn't go outside. This makes it easier for when you don't want to be as neat with your selection and it's, it's a real time saver. So make sure that you just have your mask ready to go that is in the icon and then you can right click on that mask and then intersect it with the subject. So remember how I was saying, yeah, I'm gonna make a arm sleeve its own thing. So this is what I'm doing right here. Just making the arm sleeve its own selection. With the pencil, once again, just being super accurate because on these parts where there's those little divots, you do want to be accurate. And then I'm just making it and making its own group and naming it arm sleeve. Simple as that. Now we'll move into more of the fun stuff. So we're going to start changing around the colors and after that, adding assets. So since we are inside of these groups, super important that we had made these before. So these all have their own areas that they're going to track. So we're adding a gradient map hit that semicircle, hit gradient map, boom. And then we're gonna put it inside of that group like magic. It's only gonna be covering the Jersey part. So we're gonna be using the gradient map and gradient maps go from dark to light. So dark to lightest. Now we have a black Jersey. So my midpoints are gonna also be dark and my, the highlight on the end, which is the brightest part. So that, that part on the left is the darkest part. The part on the right is the brightest part of whatever the area is. So that's the easiest way to think about a gradient map, but I know it can be confusing. And then this midpoint is the like slider as far as how far do you want to take the shadows? How far do you want to take the highlights? So with a black jersey, you're going to want to take that midpoint and bring it closer to the highlights because we don't want really a lot of highlights showing, showing casing here because it's a black jersey. And with gradient maps, the best thing I can say is you just have to play around with them you can add as many points as you want into a gradient map um, and just add as many points as you need. But I would say to stay within three to five points and then just play around with the sliders like you had seen. I was sliding that middle slider 
to and fro from the highlights end in the shadows end or the shadows end to the highlights end. So now we're gonna be adding assets to the jersey. The best way and the easiest way to add assets to a jersey is to actually just take them from a similar pose. So do your research before doing a jersey swap and get players in a similar pose. And then you're going to just mask these assets out and paste them onto your player. Now, so once you do a actual mask, it's gonna be a harsh outline, but we've already talked about layer masking and things of that nature. So you're gonna size it up and size it however it needs to be, and then use a soft brush and use some blending techniques to get the, so that you get the right angle and you get that softness that makes it look like it's blending in. And things that you're gonna wanna use when you're trying to blend things in is a lot of curves, brightness, and hue and saturation slider. So curves, brightness, hue and saturation. Curves, you're gonna get a lot of difference between your shadows and your highlights, and you're gonna be able to manually select that and control that with curves. That's why curves is super important. And then if you're gonna be using a hue and saturation, the biggest thing about saturation is you wanna understand that saturation is like color in its purest form. So that Houston Rockets red is very, very saturated and that color is like in its purest form, it looks more lively, okay? That's what I would say about saturation. If something is super saturated, it looks super lively, uh, sometimes even like too lively and um, unrealistically lively. And then brightness and contrast is just always good as a go-to and putting all these different adjustments on a layer mask is always gonna be key. So I'm selecting this collar and then I'm just gonna also start showing you guys how to do warp. So I take the collar and I put it in relative position. And then when you wanna go to warp, you right click and then click on warp. And then see warp, you can just take points and go slow with it when you're doing warp adjustments. And then see, I'm just adjusting and deleting parts that I know I'm probably not gonna need off of this this collar or this shoulder piece, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter, this detail. Another thing with warp is, you see how I had right clicked and went to that warp tool. If you hold down Alt or Option on the Mac, you can actually select your own unique points within the warp. And I'll showcase this as well as we keep going. Cause that's a, that's a really, really important part to the warp tool is you can actually pick your own little points on the warp when you hold down Alt or Option if you're on the Mac. So once you are doing all your base stuff, this is really like, you guys are about to see the easier parts of the jersey swap that you want to just build your way up to and stay consistent with, see how I'm just detailing, making sure everything is detailed. Before you move to these other assets, like the little tiny parts of the Jordan logos or the Houston Rockets, stuff like that. You you know, this part's kind of the easier part where you're just masking and placing, but everything that we've done before has been so important in order to build this up to make it super easy and super fast of a process. You guys see I placed that there, the six, you got the credit karma. So I'm just masking with the lasso tool, which is, Honestly, one of my favorite tools in Photoshop, just so quick with the lasso tool and accurate. Then I see I'm even warping this just a little bit. Just as I see fit, you might have to just warp some things because the uh, angle is not going to be perfect. And also Victor is very skinny as compared to the other guy. He wasn't as skinny. Then I desaturated the Credit Karma, added a little bit of curves like I was talking about before to adjust it. And you see it's just blending in. So play around with your curves, brightness and contrast, and saturation. See here, I'm gonna even use brightness and contrast. It's under his armpit. So I wanna make sure that part that's under his armpit is a little bit darker, guys, right? Just only makes sense. And then we bring back a little bit of light to where he is just not under the armpit, but there's still a little bit of shadow. Just trying to make it as realistic as par possible in every asset or every step of the way so that once we're, you know, closer to the final steps, we're not like, dang, I should have blended all this together. So now we're taking our lasso tool and you remember when I said he had a lot of detail on him from the jersey. So I'm just taking a, just actually a normal lasso tool here and we're just taking a selection of his jersey, the bottom part of it, because I want to make sure that it blends in 
with him and we don't see that little detail from his original jersey on him so taking the selection and then i'm going to just make it its own layer hitting Control j once whenever this is done whenever i'm done masking this yep hit Control j Control v Control alt v which places it right in place just make sure you place it in like above and then just put it into place just work in it you're gonna have to just work with these pieces the jersey swap is not going to be super straightforward as far as everything is going to just fit right into place and there's going to be a lot of things that just come up but i'm going to put this piece into place then we warp it just to get that bottom piece looking right and you guys see that warp tool it just puts in work man for real love the warp tool you don't even have to go into liquify i know in some of my previous ones you can use liquify and you know if you guys want to learn more about liquify i could drop another video or an updated video in that sense but see how like i put it into place and then what i also like to do is i like to desaturate just get the saturation on point so it's just desaturated because it's a black jersey adding a layer mask now so i can just take it away so i added that layer mask so i can paint black and take it away take away any detail that i feel is necessary and then uh the beauty of the layer mask is i could always add it back on with a white brush so that is why we use layer mask ladies and gentlemen always use layer mask when in doubt i'm trying to get it over the arm and then i was like hold on guys hold on let me cook because you know what i could have done is i could have just used the control selection of the the arm and then got it underneath the arm but i was being a little bit stubborn here so that's what we did just wanted to make sure i didn't cover the detail from that you know the side panel detail of the rockets and then i'm just checking it making sure it start looking good looks blended soft brushing as i need to Now I'm at going in with my curves, see that curves whoo, right away. So if you go on curves and you bring down, so your the bottom left is your shadows, the top right is your highlights. So take with that as you need. Then we use brightness and contrast. Blend in it, blend in it. Soft brushes are very important. And just like that, see how it just looks pretty blended, pretty realistic to me. All right, so this is my cheat code for how to make things look like they're displaced or have shadows when they actually don't have like folds and stuff like that. Like so you're, so you're gonna use shadows to make it look like it has folds. So if we take this six, for example, right? I'm gonna put it in its own group actually first. So I just put it in its own group like the other things. So let's bring the brightness down, right? First, we're gonna bring the brightness down, just match it to the brightness of the actual jersey. And then we're gonna add a exposure layer on the top. Now we invert the mask, so we hit Control I, and then we just paint white over the top of that. See that? See how it looks like it's like really folded and has an effect from the actual fold of the jersey without even using the displacement map. And this just really, really works 99.9% .9 of the time. Now you do have those folds where you are like, all right, damn well, now I need to use a displacement map. But on this project file, I didn't even use a displacement map and I don't think we really needed it. So just take that into account when you're doing jersey swaps and rewatch this part if needed. So right here, I'm just cleaning up everything. Just make sure your mask is clean, bro. And make sure everything is clean. Don't be rushing your jersey swaps. I will find you and you will get your PC taken. But nah, on a real note, bro, really just make sure that everything's clean, for real, and just take your time to make your artwork look as best as you can at the present moment, because that's really what it's all about. So just make your artwork look really well done, and even if you're doing a swap and it's swap day and there's so many trades, I don't care, bro. Just make your artwork look well, and that's like a biggest part of jersey swaps is just making sure everything looks clean because the more active you are within the canvas it's going to be easier to adjust so now i'm moving on to the part where i actually bring the crowd in i was lucky enough to find a picture where the player was only on like half of the screen so i could just bring this crowd in and size it as i want 
So you guys see that crowd pick is behind them, but it is not blended whatsoever. And also the sizing needs some adjustments. So more hidden gems coming up. We have the color check that I'm about to do. What you're gonna do for a color check is you're going to add a 50% gray layer. So you're gonna hit um, Shift F5 to do a 50% gray layer. So add a layer, Shift F5, 50% gray, boom. And then what you're gonna do after that is you're going to add a human saturation all the way saturated and then put the 50% gray layer on luminosity. Okay, and then just have that gray layer underneath. And you guys see those colors don't match up. So I'm naming this as my color check. And then what I'm gonna do is adjust the background as such to make it match my subject with color balance, simple. So I'm just making it more orange using my yellow and red sliders on color balance. And just like that, see that difference? It already looks way more realistic, like he's really there. And then the color check once again. Now we're gonna do the same thing you have the 50% gray layer, but only the 50% gray layer, and then you're gonna put it on color. And this is gonna be the value check, and the value check is going to allow you to really check your values and see if he should be darker, or if she should be lighter, or maybe you wanna change the crowd to be darker or lighter. It's up to you, but use your judgment, and then use your curves, your brightness and contrast, those adjustment layers, playing around with layer mask to make it come to life, or as they say in the design world, make it pop. Yep, so even though this wasn't a background tutorial, I wanted to show you guys a quick way to make your backgrounds uh, just match. You guys see I'm using my values and I'm just really being a nerd right now, going in and making sure everything looks super clean and good and just using my own judgment as well. So I can do another video on how to blend subjects into scenes, but I'm gonna pop up another video in the top right that you guys can check out. But that is how to jersey swap in 2023, an overview from Cal So Scoped, yours truly. If you guys did like this video, make sure to drop a comment. Let me know if this helped you out, what you liked about it, what you wanna see differently on jersey swap or you know what method you use this is just the method that i use currently whether i'm doing nba or nfl pretty much just do the same method nfl i might use a little bit more liquify but yeah guys thanks for coming through make sure to drop a like on this video subscribe to the channel if you are new and check out the patreon you guys will get this project file that's blended into the background as well as the raw jersey swap project file and i think that'll help a lot of people out Calsoscope Patreon is going to be linked below or you can search it, Calsoscope on Patreon. It does help me out a great ton. You guys get all my PSDs, live stream playbacks, texture and asset packs, and much more. As well as helping a local artist become, you know, a full-time artist. So, thank you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay scoped. It's been the Artists of Athletes, and I'm signing out.